I'm Glenn Whitney, and welcome to Varsity Math. This week's puzzle is called Mini Pixel. One of the favorite pastimes of the Varsity Math team is pixel puzzlers. In this type of puzzle, every row and column of a square grid is labeled with a sequence of numbers, indicating the lengths of all of the separate runs of adjacent black pixels to be filled in within that row or column. The goal is to deduce which pixels are black and recreate the unknown picture. Now, assume that every row and column is labeled with a single non-zero number less than the size of the grid. What is the fewest number of black pixels a pixel puzzler can have and be uniquely solvable? So to solve the mini pixel problem, we would start with the simplest case, which is a two by two puzzler. It's said in the problem that we need to have a label that's bigger than zero, but smaller than the size of the grid. So with a two by two puzzle, the only possible label is one. So our puzzle would look like this, with a one labeling every row and column. There are two possible ways of satisfying all these clues. We could either color in the top left and the bottom right, or vice versa, the top right and the bottom left. So that has an ambiguous solution, so two is not the answer to our puzzle. So we would now need to go on to a three by three grid to try the next case. We have two possible clues in the three by three case. We could either have a one or a two next to each row and column. It's pretty clear that if we had all ones along the side and top, then it would be ambiguous, just like in the two by two case. So let's try mixing a two in there. Uh, well, if we had one, two, one, now there's a problem that there's a symmetry here, right down the center line. We could swap the left and the right columns in a solution, and we would get another solution. So again, it's gonna be ambiguous, and that's not gonna be our answer. Well, what if we get rid of that symmetry? and we try, say, two, one, one along the top, and one, one, two down here. Well, let's try to solve it. To satisfy this two in this column, we would have to color in the center, just to be able to get two next to each other. And similarly, in this row, we'd have to fill in the middle uh, to be able to get two in a row here. But now we've already got the one pixel this calls for here, so this would have to be blank, and this would have to be blank and we've already got the one dark pixel that this calls for, so this would have to be blank. And now we find ourselves in the exact same situation with these four spots. Either these two would be colored in, or these two. Again, it's ambiguous, so it's not the unique solution we're looking for. So we have to move on to a four by four puzzle. That seems good, because now we have three different clues that we can have along the side and along the top, either three, two, or one. So let's try three, one, one, one down the side. And to mix it up, try to get things to be unique, let's try one, one, two, two across the top. When you do that, if you try to solve this puzzle, you'll find that it has a unique solution. So we know that the answer to the mini pixel problem is six pixels. That's the fewest number of dark pixels a pixel puzzler can have and have a unique solution.